St. John Bosco knew St. Joseph Cafasso very well from the time he spent studying at the Convito Ecclesiastic, which was a sort of boarding school for priests. Don Bosco even wrote a book about him, and it's from this book that I hope to tell you a story that will increase your fervor and devotion for the Priest of the Gallows. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. This is a story that Don Bosco used to tell about St. Joseph Cafasso. He writes, Every day after meals, we had a little recreation time. At this time, Don Cafasso became a teacher. His pupils absorbed the beautiful lessons of living in society, of dealing with the world without becoming slaves to it, and of becoming faithful priests equipped with the virtues necessary to form ministers who could give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. During these lessons, Don Cafasso described the conversions of sinners he presided over in hospitals, prisons, and other places to the delight and great advantage of the students. When Don Cafasso wasn't present, the students had a thousand stories to tell about their dear teacher. This is one of them. Don Cafasso had spent an entire week instructing and encouraging the inmates of a large prison to prepare them to celebrate a feast in honor of Mary Most Holy. These were about 45 of the most notorious criminals. Almost all had promised to seek the sacrament of confession on the eve of that solemnity. But as the appointed day came, no one was willing to begin that holy enterprise of going to confession. Don Cafasso renewed the invitation. He reminded them of all he had told them and of the promise they had made. But whether from human respect or the deception of the devil, or some other vain pretext, no one wanted to go to confession. In his charity, Don Cafasso knew exactly what to do. He laughingly approached the largest, strongest, and most robust of the prisoners. Without uttering a word, Don Cafasso grabbed the man by his long, thick beard with his small hands. The inmate thought that Don Cafasso was doing it for a joke, so in a polite way, or as politely as one can expect from such people, he said, Take everything from me, but leave my beard alone. I won't let you go until you come to confession, Don Cafasso said. But I'm not going, the inmate answered. Then I won't release you. But I don't want to go to confession, said the man. Say what you will, Don Cafasso replied. You will no longer run away from me, and I will not let you go until you've confessed your sins. But I'm not prepared, the man admitted. I'll prepare you, Don Cafasso replied. If that prisoner had wanted to, he could have easily freed himself from Don Cafasso's hands with the lightest of blows. But whether from respect for the teacher or as the fruit of the Lord's grace, the prisoner surrendered and allowed himself to be pulled by Don Cafasso into a corner of the large prison chamber. The venerable priest sat on a straw mattress and prepared his friend for confession. Surprisingly, the man was moved. Amid tears and sighs, he could hardly finish declaring his sins. Afterward, the prisoner who had first blasphemed and refused to confess went to his companions and told them he had never been so happy before in his life. He was so enthusiastic that he talked all of them into making their confessions. Whether one wishes to call this story, which I have chosen from thousands like it, a miracle of God's grace, or whether one desires to say it's a miracle of Don Cafaso's charity, one must recognize the hand of the Lord. Don Cafasso held confessions that day until very late at night when the prison exits were closed. He was on the verge of having to sleep with the inmates. The guards came in, armed with rifles, pistols, and sabers, and they set about making the usual rounds, holding lamps on the ends of long iron rods. While checking for possible escapes or fighting among the prisoners, they saw a stranger and shouted, Who goes there? Then, without waiting for an answer, they surrounded him and threatened him, saying, What are you doing here? Who are you? Don Cafasso wanted to speak, but it was impossible because the guard shouted, Stand still! Don't move! Tell us who you are! I'm Don Cafasso, he exclaimed. Don Cafasso? How? At this hour? Why didn't you leave on time? We can no longer let you leave without reporting it to the warden. 
I don't mind, he answered. Go ahead and make the report to whoever you want. But mind you, at nightfall, you were supposed to bring out all prison visitors. That was your duty, and you are at fault for not doing so. They all fell silent at this, and then they begged Don Cafaso to keep quiet about what had happened. So they opened the door for him, and, to win his good will, accompanied him as far as his house. Don Cafaso never heard any more of this incident after that. Four times a year, on major solemnities, he would kindly distribute bread and fruit among the inmates and ask them to say a Hail Mary to help save his soul. The prayers of these prisoners were certainly heard as Father Joseph Cafaso was canonized in 1947. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you'd like to see a video on St. Dominic Savio, please click on the video I put on the screen. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.